Dr. Rahul Ramachandran is Deputy Editor for Earth Science Informatics and a Principal Research Scientist at the Information Technology and Systems Centre at the University of Alabama in Huntsville. Rahul has pioneered the concept of data prospecting, which sits between data mining and data discovery. He is also Chair of the newly formed Research Data Alliance Working Group on Big Data Analytics. He graduated with a PhD in 2002 from the Atmospheric Science Department at the University of Alabama in Huntsville and was selected for the 2010 Presidential Early Career Award for Scientists and Engineers. In this presentation, he speaks about his work on data discovery and big complex data in the domain of atmospheric science. Thank you for inviting me to give this talk. Um, so here's the outline. I'll, I'll go a few slides to introduce uh, who am I, you know, what I do in terms of research. I'll talk a little bit more about the research lab uh, where I work. A lab actually runs a, a data archive, I think very much similar to MADS, so there may be you know, uh, things of interest there. And then I'll talk about two ongoing uh, data projects that might be of interest to people here. The first one is actually looking at uh, data and information aggregation. The other one is uh, big data looking at you know, event, event analytics. I have a rather a eclectic educational background. It's kind of all over the place. I guess I'm still an engineer. That's what I did as an undergrad, um, but I have uh, degrees in atmospheric science and computer science. Um, a little bit about my center. So, you know, we are a research lab. Our research focus, you know, we've, we've done a lot of work in data mining and knowledge discovery, or, or obviously work in the area of informatics. We do a fair amount of wargaming stuff. Uh, we built games that are used by the U.S. military for training. A lot of our funding comes from all these three-letter agencies in the U.S. So we also run one of the 12 NASA data archives. Um, so it's basically a you know, fully operational data archive where we do operational data ingest, uh, custom processing, archive distribution. And our primary data sets are you know, lightning data. Uh, we also hold a lot of the ground validation uh, free campaign data that we get the NASA runs for uh, instrument validation. And then we have uh, the microwave data products. That's actually an important uh, part of uh, you know, for planet science. You all know this. This is the data life cycle. Uh, what has changed in the recent years is that you know data is no longer treated as a second class citizen. It's kind of treated as a first class object. The importance of data is now being slowly realized. In fact, there's a quote that you know, data is now the currency in science. Um, what we try to do is to figure out you know, what are the process inefficiencies that are there in the data life cycle. How can we make scientific process, uh, scientific process be faster, better, more productive? So what's happening is so as technology is evolving, some of the process components may be getting obsolete. So we have to you know, start looking at new solutions that uh, can be used. And the other thing that's happening in, uh, at least in the US, and it may be happening there too, is you are getting new policy requirements that you have to deal with. So, you know, like NSF now requires a data management plan. NASA has a, a data preservation requirement that in that, you know, you have to have handle all the metadata details uh, so that you can, you have enough contextual understanding to years down the road that you can use the data again. And the other thing that's coming down our horizon is the whole notion of reproducibility and executable paper. Uh, that's the gold standard that everyone's going to with, you know, um, science, especially the aspects of science that have major policy implications. You have to make sure that you can reproduce those results. Uh, so the area that I work in is in earth science informatics, and that's basically looking at, you know, how do you apply systematic, you know, technology approaches to the entire aspects of the data life cycle, and not just the knowledge extraction and the decisions of the project, but the whole of, you know, even the acquisition processing, you know, how do you gather the information, all that part of it. And the important thing is providing, you know, very customized solutions to the stakeholders and, you know, not giving tools that they cannot utilize. Now I'm going to transition. This is pretty much a background on what I do. Um, 
And I'm going to talk about two ongoing projects. And th these, uh, this presentation about these projects are at a fairly high level. Uh, so this is slide that's required now to give a definition of uh, big data. The first one is Gartner's definition of big data that everybody knows about, where you have the whole notion of velocity, uh, volume, that you know, everybody understands the velocity that you have, real-time aspects uh, to the data, and the notion of variety, that you know, there's different kinds of data that you're getting that will have different kinds of quality information, format types that you have to handle. I really don't like Gartner's definition um, for big data. It's a different perspective, I guess. So this is Jim Fru from University of Santa Barbara. His definition, I like. I think it's more from a data center perspective. It's, you, know, you can't really move it. It's like an organ. If you want to play, you have to go to the organ. The organ doesn't come to you. So that's with the big data. You can't move it. If you want to use it, you have to go where it is. So implications to data centers around the world is that you know now you have to start looking at systems that can actually do analysis on the data. So the two projects that I'm presenting here, the first one is is actually focusing on this whole notion of variety. You know, how do you now actually you have so much of information and distributed data that you can get on the web, right? At different locations, there are different sources. How can you automate aggregation around events of interest? Uh, the second case is actually look, looking at more analytics, it's looking at event analytics. So here's the first project. Uh, this is a NASA-funded project. Um, uh, it's called Curated Data Albums for Science Case Studies. And the concept here is that you know a data album is basically a compiled collection of information around an event of interest. So this uh, compiled collection includes not just the data files that you want to use for studying that event, but also has links to services, tools, news reports, videos, make, you know, anything that gives you full contextual understanding that's useful for uh, studying that event uh, down the road. And the curation here is to allow an end user to basically customize the data album for their particular study. Because each user may have a different uh, view of how they want, what they want to study that event for. So the motivation behind uh, building a tool like this is that, you know, um, at least in atmospheric science, uh, one of the most common research that is done is case study analysis and climatology studies focused on a significant event. Right? You have a major flooding event or you have a major hurricane come through. A lot of research is done on that understanding how that event occurred. So to do that, what we need is a wide variety of data and information from you know, all the distributed locations that are there. So for example, you know, NASA has all these different DACs. You know, each DAC is holding you know, one kind of a data set. If you are an individual researcher, then you have to figure out where to go and get the data uh, based on you know, the metadata that's there provided. The other thing is science is also becoming very interdisciplinary. Um, you may have users who may, may not be experts in a particular data set, or they may not know the exact vocabulary or metadata term to use to find to do the search right. So how do you support users like that? So the whole gathering and you know gathering of data and information around this whole notion of events is actually really tedious and time consuming. Uh, so the challenge is to build a tool that can do this. Uh, gathering of information in an automated manner, but the gathering part is actually the easy part. You know, the hard part is how do you figure out what is relevant in terms of what's out there. So that's the challenge here is you know once you're gathering stuff, figuring out what to filter and what to keep. The other part of it is the metadata tends to be fairly boring, right? Like how do you present this collated information in a manner that is actually more useful and intuitive? Uh, you know, we can present metadata in a really dry manner. Uh, so can we do something a little different here? That's, that is the challenge in terms of uh, building this tool. So the, the science driver here is for hurricane science. It's probably the easiest event to start with because it's a major event. There's lots of information about it. There's information about tracks and, you know, how the, the hurricane actually progressed. So the goal was to you know, use this as the first uh, science driver and uh, build catalogs around all the hurricane events for the last 20 years. Focus is not just on the data, but it's also on, you know, 
the information that is normally required is the back, you know, the background information. What was the damage caused? How many deaths were there? A lot of these things require parsing through web pages or PDF files of storm reports and stuff. This is the conceptual architecture. You know, you have these uh, different uh, uh, resources on the left hand side that are coming actually from all these agencies in the US. You may have things that are crowdsourced, like uh, videos and pictures on YouTube that you can get. So the goal is to aggregate this, figure out what is relevant and then put it in a structured form and present it to a end user so that they can actually like, utilize this information. So this is the uh, data architecture for the tool. There is an engine that drives the different brokers that talk to the different distributed resources and then puts everything together in a no security database because some of our, uh, the data gets so large, uh, uh, efficiently querying it is an issue. Um, and there is a service layer and then the, at the top we have a presentation layer where we provide you provide a user to allow us to do some in, interactive analytics. There is interactive visualization and a faster visual search part of it. Uh, the piece I'm going to talk about is the, 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 the piece that's new is this whole ontology based uh, relevancy ranking capability. And then obviously I'll show you a little bit about the, uh, the tool. So the ranking service, the ontology is ranking service is actually designed as a general service uh, that can be customized to many different applications. And it combines this, uh, an ontology based score and a traditional statistical score and it's based on these two papers by Barmore and uh, the score rank paper. And I won't go into the details of the algorithm, but there are two components here. And the first one is an ontology component where we have an application ontology. In this case, we have an ontology for a hurricane. For all the concepts in the ontology, we calculate the weights, basically the linkages between the concepts. Uh, so the more uh, connected a concept is, the higher weight it has. Uh, and then we calculate an activation value. So not everything in the ontology, not all the concepts in the ontology are, you know, deemed, are important. There are certain ones that are much higher, of a higher value. So those are the key ones. Uh, that's where the search starts. So those act, those concepts get a much higher activation values compared to the other ones. And then, then we use this the very standard uh, DFID model for statistical calculations, where they, you do a term frequency calculation for a word, and then you do an inverse document frequency calculation for a word. So the relevancy score where we calculate is that you know we look at a document, uh, look at all the metadata. Then we match against the concepts in the ontology, and then we calculate a score based on the ontology. And we calculate a score based on statistical uh, the DFID model, and then that is given a relevancy score. So that's how we, you know, can uh, uh, do some relevancy filtering on the of, of the information that we are gathering. Question from Andrew Tremor. So I can see how that's going to work for documents. I don't see how it's going to work for some of the non-document. Uh, resources that you were showing in the bottom layer of your conceptual architecture. Mm, done like what? Uh, I saw YouTube, for instance. I so, saw Flickr. What so what we do in YouTube is we do a query expansion. Okay. The ontology drives the query expansion. If you're searching for, say, Hurricane Sandy, mm -hmm. right? So if you do just a Hurricane Sandy on YouTube, you may get people called Sandy with their yeah. right. So we can use the ontology to automate the query expansion. So we add uh, okay. more detailed terms so that yeah. <clears throat> does the relevancy filtering for you. So we we did the uh, we looked at the uh, how well this algorithm works. Uh, clearly, the algorithm can be improved quite a bit, but you know this is Grassman's uh, work. Uh, there are you know known things we know we can improve it, not the, uh, in terms of the algorithm itself. So we compared the algorithm against truth data, which was against our data center collections for hurricanes. So we manually selected 35 data collections, and we compared it against the top 35 that were returned by the uh, our, our ranking. So we get an accuracy about 82 percent. The precision and recall is about 60. So, it's, uh, so if you, um, so you know, ideally you want high precision and high recall, but normally that never happens. Um, so for Search purposes, we have tuned it to be at a higher recall at an NFR at a much a little lower uh, frequency because the goal here is to make sure that everything that is important is returned as part of uh, the search process. So um, 
maybe I should demo this page. So this is the uh, you know the the information that's been aggregated uh, for the different hurricanes. You have three different views. Um, we still have people who like things in a tabular form. So <laughs> they insisted on having a list view. There's a, a different view of like a bubble. You can see the different uh, for a particular year. The different storms and the size actually the color is the category of the storm, and the size is the number of data. The information that's been collected for the particular storm. The sunburst is the same thing, but you now have a way of you know, have, doing a visual facets on it. Uh, so you can actually you can drill down to a particular year. Um, you can see the storms based on different categories. And again, the, the angle of the size is the storm duration in this case. Um, and if you select a particular storm, so this is all the aggregated information that we are getting. Um, so this is from Wikipedia, uh, a lot of this information, the tabular information. All this is coming by parsing PDF reports. Um, things like this that are important for the users, like how well did they do the forecast for this particular storm versus uh, you know, their record. So this is using brokers tuned for those particular kinds of reports. Yeah. yeah. And parsing the PDF is based on a rule based engine that you know, specify rules and parses and stuff. Um, <coughs> and then you have, for the particular storm itself, now you have the actual uh, data sets. So these are the different data collections that you have. And yeah. and you have all the granules. That you can actually get a list of that are on a server that you can actually have a look for studying the particular storm. Um, you can search based on keywords or instruments, and the user can change the threshold, the relevancy ranking threshold. So if they think that you know the threshold is too high or too low, and they're not getting enough results, mm -hmm. then they can uh, change the threshold. Oops, and it messed up. <laughs> Sorry about that. <coughs> and you can select your individual, somehow it's not refreshing for some reason. Uh, if you select an individual data collection, then you get only those files that you can visualize and study. So, this is you know, kind of a different way of gathering distributed information at this, uh, different locations. Uh, 